the idea of a fifth marrying dogma sound confusing to you? Uh, do you have questions like, well, is it a triple dogma? Are they three titles? Or is it just one dogma with, with three manifestations? Uh, what about these Latin words, co-redemptrix, mediatrix, advocate, I thought she was just my mother? Uh, is there a lack of clarity on something that you may already have in your heart? That's what we're going to discuss today. Hello, this is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. Welcome to MariCast. Uh, these are similar questions uh, that, that many people uh, throughout the world are having uh, in trying to get their mind around this proposed Fifth Marian Dogma. So let's call this uh, the Fifth Marian Dogma for Beginners, Mariology 101 in terms of what exactly is being proposed. Most of you will be aware of the fact that in our own time now, in 2008, uh, some five cardinals from different parts of the world are petitioning the Holy Father for proclamation of the Fifth Marian Dogma. They have in fact invited other cardinals and bishops from throughout the world to join the petition they've already given to Pope Benedict XVI. So it's in the news, uh, it's on the web, it's through the net. Uh, Take a look and do a Google search or a Yahoo search and you'll see that there's some over 7,000 hits, websites, locations talking about a proposed new Marian dogma. So let's, let's go to the heart of what is the existing doctrine regarding Our Lady as spiritual mother of all humanity and let's bring it down a little bit. Let's simplify it. Uh, perhaps you're not Catholic and you've ever heard these titles or perhaps uh, you just have a lack of understanding about what the church uses with some of this terminology. Okay, let, let, let's go right to the heart of this. First of all, it is taking what is an existing church doctrine, uh, that of Our Lady as a spiritual mother to each and every human being. It's taking what's already a doctrine of the church and it's seeking to define that on a higher level of truth. That's the difference between doctrine and dogma. Doctrine is an existing truth that's officially taught by the church's magisterium or teaching authority, official teaching authority. That means the Pope and bishops in union with the Pope, always in obedience to the Pope, that the, the, the ordinary magisterium is already teaching that Mary is the spiritual mother of all peoples. This is the teaching of the Second Vatican Council, where the Council says in Lumen Gentium 61, Mary is a mother to us in the order of grace. So this is the church's way of saying, we want you to believe this. This is an official teaching of the church. It's part of our heritage. It's part of our tradition. It's part of what we call the depositum fidei. It's part of the deposit of faith that's being passed down. That's the role that's the most general, that as you had and I had a, a mother in the natural order, uh, a mother that gave us birth, so too we have a mother in the supernatural order. We have a spiritual mother. So what does this spiritual mother do? Well, the spiritual mother does essentially what our mothers did for us uh, in three major ways. Uh, our natural mothers uh, suffered for us. Uh, certainly in giving us birth, there was suffering, and, and oftentimes before that with uh, pains and, and discomfort and morning sickness, and then of course, because of love, the suffering continues even after birth. Every mother knows that she suffers for her children. Uh, that's part of motherly love and, and motherly concern. So Mary suffered for us in the spiritual order. Mary suffered for us in obtaining the graces of salvation. For that role, the church calls her the co-redemptrix. So, and, and some could already be saying, no, wait a minute, now we're talking about spiritual motherhood, now we're going to co-redemptrix, I'm getting lost. Well, in our foundations, what we're saying is, you're talking about one mother, one mother in this spiritual order. And this mother, this single mother, has different functions, different roles she plays within the general role of motherhood. Again, uh, we didn't have three different mothers who suffered for us, who nourished us, who interceded for us, we had one mother that performed those three functions for us in the order of nature, in, in our family lives. 
So too, Mary is our spiritual mother, and as spiritual mother, she performs the same functions in the spiritual order. First of all, she suffered for us in being the, the perfect companion with Jesus Christ in acquiring the graces of salvation. So for that role of suffering with us, she's called the co-redemptrix. And in upcoming segments, I'm going to focus just on the co-redemptrix role, and, and we're going to do a simplification of that as well. But for now, Mary suffered for us in the spiritual order in union with Jesus in the work of redemption. She's called the co-redemptrix for that. Well, what else did Mary do as our spiritual mother? Secondly, Mary nourishes us as our spiritual mother. Of course, any good mother feeds her children, takes care of their physical needs in that dimension too. Our Lady also feeds us spiritually. She nourishes us spiritually. She distributes the graces that Jesus, and secondarily that she participated in acquiring at Calvary. And so the graces are acquired. It's almost like the food is on the table, but you have to get the food to the people. And that's Mary's second role. Mary is a, a spiritual nurturer. Mary uh, distributes, she dispenses, she passes out, if you will, the graces of Jesus for our salvation. For that role, the church uses the expression mediatrix of all graces. That means that each and every grace that was won for us by Jesus, who was the new Adam, right? That's what St. Paul calls Jesus, the new Adam. The first Adam lost grace for us. The new Adam acquires, uh, restores grace for us. Well, the new Adam had a new Eve, and the new Eve is Mary. Absolutely dependent, uh, absolutely subordinate, but still a critical role in obtaining these graces. Well, the new Eve also distributes these graces. She passes these graces out to the human family in the spiritual order. So remember, we're talking about one mother and one overall motherly role in the spiritual order. That's what Mary is for, for everyone. And this one role has three ditch, different aspects, three different dimensions, uh, three different ways of service. So she is the mother who suffers for us in the spiritual order with Jesus, co -redemptrix. She is the mother that nourishes us in the spiritual life by distributing the graces that Jesus, and secondarily that she uh, won for us, obtained for us at Calvary. For that distribution, for passing out, she's called the mediatrix of all graces. And yes, that means each and every grace that Jesus merited on Calvary, each and every grace that Jesus won for us, for our salvation, comes to us through Mary. That's her role as spiritual mother distributing, spiritual mother passing out the graces. But there's a third thing that your mother and my mother did for us uh, as earthly human mothers, and that is they pleaded for us, they interceded for us, they spoke on our behalf, whether it was at school or at the playground or in uh, helping us to get homework done. We know the myriad of ways that mothers speak on behalf of their children. That's the third way that Mary is a spiritual mother to us. Mary speaks on our behalf to Jesus and Mary brings our needs to Jesus. For that role, Mary is called in the church advocate. So, again, reviewing. One mother in the spiritual order. One mother in the order of grace. This one mother suffered for us and continues to suffer for us. That's her role as co-redemptrix. The one mother nourishes us and continues to nourish us by passing out the graces of Jesus, one for our salvation. Thirdly, the one mother is the one who intercedes on our behalf. She, she speaks on our behalf. One mother, three roles. That's co-redemptrix, mediatrix, advocate. And we'll speak more about these roles in making it clear that this is the mother who does it for us in that spiritual order. Thanks and God bless you.